Hey Groovers, I had to take a day off today, a day off of podcasting and a day off of telling the news because this terrible, terrible stabbing in that we've had in the UK had just upset me so much and I, you know, it was all over the headlines, it was the biggest story in the UK today and um, I couldn't talk about it, absolutely could not and I just thought I can't do the news today. Um... So I just didn't. I just thought, no, we don't. I mean, the thing with, you know, doing your own, being your own, you know, creator and, you know, you have full direction, your own producer, you have full direction of what you do every day. Um, so I just thought, I can't, I just can't do that. Um, so I didn't. And I didn't do, what I did do, though, I did do some writing. I can't remember what I wrote. I've forgotten now. I think I did some poetry this morning. Um, and I, I do feel that that's really important now that I've started that, you know, that discipline writing every day. Um, I'll probably just go and play some viola in a minute. Anyway, I was looking, because I had a bit of a crisis about how slow everything is, you know, it's taking me so long as a writer and a composer to, you know, make inroads and, you know, they say social media is the way forward and I can't get any traction on on my Instagram or on my Facebook. Not that I try, actually. Um, And my YouTube is so sporadic and it just goes up and down for no reason. And my downloads and my podcasts go up and down for no reason. And, you know, I was thinking about the branding and how, you know, I'm in this for the long haul and I was, you know, I predicted... 10 or 20 years to create the, a brand as a writer, as a creator, as a, a somebody who tells stories. And um, normally I have quite a lot of patience, but I just haven't had the... Lately, I just don't feel that... I feel the patience is wearing a bit thin. Um, and I'm not sure why, actually, because I've always said, you know, I hope to see something within five years. I hope to see people reading my stories listening to you know the the audio books or whatever you know however it manifests um but there's been so much experiment i guess because the internet's such a weird thing isn't it when you write a story and then you just put it out there and maybe two people read it or you write a poem you know and you think oh it's really good and I, I don't put anything out that I don't think is really good. Well, actually, that's not true. There is a lot of rubbish out. Um, but one man's rubbish, you know, is another another man's absolutely wonderful find. Um, and whether I reevaluate at some point and start removing stuff, I can't afford to do that at the moment. If I start removing, I just completely and utterly privatised 10,000 videos on my YouTube. And... Everything suffered because of it. So even though there's so much crud on there, um, I mean, it's my crud. I'm not ashamed of any of it. I'm just not necessarily proud of a lot. Of, no, I'm, I'm not even going to say that. You know, it's, it's, it did its stuff at the time. And when you've been an artist, you know, and you create, or I, the way I create is I create things in the moment. And I think, yeah, I'm going to do that. I think that might light a few ignite a bit of inspiration for a few people or I'm going to do that because of this that and da 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 um, so everything does have a have its relevance in the time that it's made I think that's what artists do to a degree unless we're completely self-indulgent and we're only doing it for ourselves but you know I'm trying to make a career as a producer I'm not I don't want to just you know paint and not be recognised for it or not you know, not get any um, attention. I don't mean praise. I just mean attention. You know, just people should look, go, oh, cool. yeah, that's weird, or or oh, I'm not sure I like it. But at least they've noticed it. You know, just to be noticed. It's not attention seeking. The desire to be noticed is not attention seeking. Um, and I really, I, I just don't particularly want attention at this stage of my life. You know, I'm an old lady. I'm not interested in, in attention. I'm interested in people reading my books. And I'm interested in people engaging with my stories. 
and it's the same with the music you know as a musician music is a, tells a story i mean i make music for for my books i don't make music for anything else um it's all for for a story it's all for my books i think i might start making tracks for the poems i think that might be quite interesting um i don't know how long they'd be i mean i guess i mean, just something that maybe plays in the background and then oh, i don't know i feel i'm feeling a bit arty i'm feeling very arty farty today because and i've done two pictures i think as well so I, I sort of went back to that kind of thing. Anyway, I was doing this research, right, about how do you create a brand? Um, how long does it take to create a brand? I mean, I, I sort of follow a rudimentary plan of action. It's very rudimentary, my five-year plan. Um, and I'm in year four and nothing's happening. Or it feels like nothing's happening. So I thought... I was ready to give up this morning. I just thought, oh, God, I'm having a fucking crisis. Um, anyway, I just uh, did a bit of research. And the thing is, you can only, you know, the, you can only research online. There's no other. What else? Where else am I going to get my information from? You know, it's all online, isn't it? We can't. We, we don't. We don't have access to anything anymore unless it's online. Weirdly. You know, I think in maybe in the old days you would you would network at some party or some luncheon and you'd be introduced to somebody who knew somebody who'd be able to give you some tips on who to you know, which publisher to go to or which you know or you'd know somebody who'd know somebody and before you knew it Hello Rubio, it's my cat. Before you knew it, you know, you'd you'd get some really life-changing advice about how to market your brand or what you needed to do. Um, but I'm just of the, you know, I don't have those assets. I don't have people who are who can be an asset to my business. Nobody. Um, I only have the internet. And I, I'm also very aware that the, because the internet cha just changes so much so quickly within an hour it's changed, you know. But what does, it makes me really suspicious when I read that it says the you know i was just on reddit and there's, there are people there saying it's all about social media because i don't trust social media i think it's been taken over by uh, by by ai i don't trust it anymore um anyway there are various types of social media and social media for me my social media and what i mean by social media is something that um I can upload free, share my detritus of the day and get exposure. So for that, for me, I, it has to be, I have to admit that it's YouTube, even though I don't, I'm not really in love with YouTube at the moment because of these things they do. I found out why they were um, making so many of my videos private. It was because of the duplicate content. So lesson learned there. Um, anyway, yeah, so, and DeviantArt. I was upset with DeviantArt because people seem to be copying my work. But I, I just think that's the nature of life, you know, at the moment. Everyone's going to copy somebody who's good. And AI is going to do it as well. So, you know, you've got all these issues and problems, but... The alternative is not to put your work out there, and that's just ridiculous, you know. So what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, put do a picture a day. I've got loads and I've got thousands of artworks that I can work on, thousands of them, because I use a digital pen now. I use Procreate, and you know, for me, it's 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 therapy to sit and draw for four hours. Um, and and you're drawing on a, a tablet, you know, and I can rub out stuff that I don't like. I'm getting really nifty with the pens and I'm doing these cartoon kind of graphic heavy drawings. When I say graphic heavy, I mean like, um, you know, graphic novels, 
and I really enjoy doing them actually I love it um, and it is therapy for me it's, it's as therapeutic as playing my my viola and my cello but what I do want to do is kind of get back to a bit more music and I think I'm ready to play the viola even though I've only been playing a couple of months if that's probably about six weeks so I think I'm ready for that but what I, I don't want to do live stuff. I'm not interested. Or what should I say, um, video, videos. I've really grappled with it this week. And I just don't enjoy it. I, and I thought, now I'm going to do live tattooing. That's going to be really good. Because I tattoo myself, so why not? May as well have somebody watching. I don't want to be watched. Absolutely don't want. Not into that idea at all. Not into that idea remotely. Just want to make music and write stories nothing else and that's what I'm going to do um but I'm still you know really thinking heavily about the Tale Teller Club brand and then of course I thought oh, I've got I've started these other bloody brands you know I've got Toddle Puddle and I've got I Serverland and they were really secondary brands they were sort of offshoots but they've developed their own you know I mean I Serverland's a character from the Tale Teller Club books. Um, Toddle Poddle isn't. But the Rat Gang crew, they're all characters from the from the books. When Nike and, um, you know, Vapor Punk, they're all characters. But they, I sh I'm not going to focus so much on um, developing their, them as individual brands. But it's too difficult. You end up just going off, off on these spider legs of, um, information that's too difficult to you know collate and it, it's I get diluted my brain gets diluted and and you know the big brand the main brand is that is Telltale Club that's the important thing so more research and I realized that most people seem to be suggesting five to ten years so I'm in year four four and a half so I kind of feel a bit better tonight that you know I, I'm not famous as a brand yet because I've still got a long way to go um and then of course Sonia de la Mare you know that's my that's my author that's my name have I got a you know I've only just started using that about six months ago for my books, for the, for the, um, you know, the stories, mostly because the copyright, you usually have to put your legal name. So I just thought, oh, I might as well just start using that for the stuff that's really important, the copyright. I mean, I, I obviously I own all my copyrights, but, um, yeah, so, you know, the, there are brands within brands, but what, what I really want to be is Sana de la Mare, who just writes stuff for Tale Teller Club. And I serve Lan as the musician and the artist for Tale Teller Club. And Toddle Poddle is a, the under 12s branch of Tale Teller Club. Do you see what I mean? You can get so confused. It's, so, it's all so complicated. So, um, so, yeah, just trying to work it all out and, and really find the resolve to just, just stick to the bloody plan, you know? Stick to the plan. I love writing stories. I love telling stories. I love making the artwork for the stories. Lose yourself in the safety of books. It's what I believe in. You know, that's everything that I believe in. So I'm just going to keep going, guys. And try not to get despondent. And try not to think people must be so sick of hearing my, you know, my attempts at, um, you know, because I talk about my brand all the time. I'm obsessed with it. But you have to be. You've just never let go of it. That's what I found out today by research. Never give up. Never let go of it. Keep at it. Be consistent. So I've had one day off and I feel really guilty. I feel terrible. My brand will die in a day. A bit, a bit like, you know, I I haven't practised piano for a couple of days. I'll die at piano, but I won't because I'm getting back on it tomorrow. So if you're having a similar similar time, just persevere, guys. Persevere. Tailteller Club dot com. <laughs>